15 point BEPS action plan was uh, announced by the OECD uh, around 10 days ago and most commentators, most tax experts, most IRS officers, most businessmen call it radical. It will change the way uh, everyone uh, operates, everyone looks at, at tax uh, and it could uh, put an end to dubious uh, tax uh, avoidance. Though not an end to tax planning maybe, but definitely an end to dubious tax uh, uh, avoidance. If I could just uh, introduce my uh, uh, the special guest whom we have today, Mr. Rafael Russo, Senior Advisor uh, at OECD and he is going to be in the thick of the action over the next 18 to 24 months trying to implement this um, ambitious and radical uh, BEPS uh, plan. Thank you so much Mr. Russo for taking out time to talk to Tax Sutra. If I could just read out uh, you know, the, the comment made uh, by Dr. Amans. Uh, you know, after the, the report was released, Dr. Ahmad said, uh, government's frustration with companies' aggressive tax avoidance has had created a once-in-a-century opportunity to overhaul the rules, which date back to the League of Nations in the 1930s. We clearly have reached the point where government don't care anymore about taboos and they just say we cannot be bound by pure contractual arrangements. It's not possible to only allocate the profit through only contractual uh, arrangements. <clears throat> and if you look at the BEPS report, uh, the action plan, it very clearly says that there was a tense atmosphere right now in many countries and thereby, uh, you know, putting pressure on the OECD to come out with this action plan. Uh, so is this is some sort of a tax morality, uh, Mr. Russo, as many are calling it? Good morning to you and uh, good morning everyone. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to be, to be with you. Uh, I do agree that this is, uh, this is an historical moment for uh, uh, international tax policy. Uh, we are applying rules that uh, very often were devised more than a century ago uh, when the economy was uh, completely different and uh, there is a recognition in all quarters, even at the highest uh, political level, that uh, uh, there must be a reconsideration of the rules that govern the taxation of, of cross-border profits. Uh, I do not think that it is an issue of tax morality per se. I think that it is an issue of the way the rules are drafted and also the way the rules interact uh, with each other. As you know, at the OECD, uh, we have done a lot of work in the past uh, uh, decades to eliminate double taxation. Uh, this is important because it promotes cross-border trade uh, and, uh, and investment. But at the same time, there is a recognition that today the same rules are being used uh, in order to create double non-taxation. In the current climate of, of austerity and, 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 and fiscal pressure uh, to, the, to the budgets of many countries, this is something which is not affordable anymore. And therefore, uh, what the work on BEPT has, has done so far has been first to do a diagnosis of, of what the problem is. And now we have basically issued the prescription. Uh, uh, on, on what needs to be done and what next is effectively to prepare the medicine uh, uh, and make sure that then we are all, uh, we are all back on track uh, through a system of, uh, of, uh, of rules, domestic and international, that prevents both double taxation and double non-taxation. I think that's quite significant. <coughs> you, you see that one of the key objectives of this report is to put an end to double uh, non-taxation. Uh, how confident are you you will be able to achieve it? And the reason why I'm asking is, is because a lot of countries, including India, have bilateral treaties. And, and some treaties uh, give favorable tax treatment, like you have the india Mauritius tax treaty. So how will you put an end to uh, double non-taxation? Uh, uh, you will need amendments to these bilateral tra tax treaties. <clears throat> Well, you will need amendments to a number of rules, including double tax treaties, but also domestic laws. Uh, if you want uh, uh, coherence of, of tax rules, is very often ensured at the domestic level. You allow a deduction for a payment, which then is taxed in the hands of the, of the recipient. This is not necessarily the case in an international context, where the rules of, of, of different countries are not necessarily aligned with each other, and therefore create arbitrage opportunities that can be exploited to uh, obtain double non-taxation. I do think that the actions that are under this uh, pillar in the, uh, in the action plan that was released on the 19th of July will indeed provide uh, solutions uh, to uh, avoid such a situation. If you look at the area of, of hybrid mismatch arrangements, for example, uh, the idea is to develop rules that link the tax treatment 
of an item of income uh, in one country to the tax treatment in the other country. And therefore, by definition, eliminating the possibility to uh, obtain double non-taxation. Uh, but Mr. Russo, uh, I think the important question is, are you looking to achieve this through a multilateral tax convention, a multilateral convention between all the countries, a grand convention uh, like, like a Vienna document? Uh, 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 the famous Vienna document or you're looking at uh, maybe uh, 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 as you said some change in domestic rules of all countries or you think it will be a country by country you know you amend every bilateral agreement which is going to be very difficult so uh, what's the approach going to be what's the approach you are you are suggesting and advising well if you look at the if you look at the action plan there are a number of expected outputs and some of these outputs will be recommendations to amend domestic legislation other outputs will be likely changes to the transfer pricing guidelines, which is to interpret, to interpret Article 9 of treaties based on the OECD model, and changes to the OECD model tax convention. Now, as regards changes to the OECD model tax convention, these changes are obviously not uh, immediately uh, effective, because countries will have incorporated these changes into their network of bilateral treaties. And for countries that have a large number of, of treaties, you can imagine that basically it would be for the next generation to see, to see these results. If a country has command 100 plus treaties, uh, it, will not, it will not take uh, one year, it will take several years. So the idea that, uh, that you see in Action 15 of the Action Plan, the one that everyone calls last but not least uh, action, is effectively to develop a multilateral instrument that can be used by countries in order to amend their bilateral treaties in one go. This means that basically you say all the time that is related to the negotiation of the bilateral treaty and also all the time that is needed for the domestic ratification of, of changes to existing treaties. So, so essentially, if I can, <coughs> if I can, you know, uh, understand you correctly, I then summarize this. You are saying it will be like a, a model treaty which every all the countries uh, should adopt, a model treaty convention, right? No, it will be an actual treaty that will be used in order to amend existing bilateral treaties. Okay. <coughs> that, that's fine. Uh, I think if you uh, want, yeah. if you want, there is a precedent in this respect in a different area, which is the area of exchange of information. Yeah. If you look at what happened in the area of exchange of information, again, thanks to the strong support expressed by the G20 in order to find uh, uh, bank secrecy for uh, tax purposes, m many countries have been able to implement this commitment through a multilateral convention, the multilateral convention on uh, mutual administrative assistance in tax matters that was first uh, opened up for signature in 1988 and then it was revised recently to open it up to all countries and incorporate international, international agreed standard in, in that area. Perfect, Mr. Russo. I think uh, one important concern uh, that's been voiced by quite a few tax professionals, uh, especially in India, and I would read out a few comments for you uh, from some senior tax professionals and experts. They said that the implementation would require <coughs> greater degree of cooperation between tax administration, administrators and alignment of tax regulations particularly the ones that affect cross-border movement of goods and services. <laughs> the G20 should work closely with the taxpayer community and address vexed issue such that functioning of businesses are not uh, uh, impacted. That is one comment. Another head of uh, tax, uh, corporate tax at one of the large MNCs here, Indian MNCs based here <coughs> in Mumbai, uh, they say that the, the existing bilateral treaties have been negotiated and concluded after careful consideration of various relevant aspects pertaining to two countries involved. The exercise of, of uh, replacing this with a near uniform treaty for consistency and cohesion is certainly laudable but one hopes adequate engagement with businesses takes place uh, in the process. So the worry is uh, that <coughs> when these uh, action plans are implemented, the, the, the businesses across the world, uh, they, they are uh, you know, kept in mind and they don't have to go through a lot of uh, uh, trouble while, uh, you know, while shifting to this, uh, uh, to this new uh, BEPS regime. You have, you know, so uh, the question is, uh, therefore, does OECD have the businessman's perspective uh, also in mind while drafting this? Well, we have in mind the perspective of all stakeholders. And, and, and these perspectives have also been taken into account when drafting the reports that we issued in February and when drafting the action plan. 
there is an institutional mechanism at the OECD, which is the Business and Industry Advisory Committee, which effectively uh, filters and, and provides the uh, uh, input of the business community on, on all the work that the OECD does, including the, the tax work. There is two, which is the Trade Union Advisory Committee that basically filters and provides to the OECD the uh, input of, of trade unions. And we've also been very engaged with the, with the NGOs and the civil society at large. As, as, as this uh, issue has moved from being a, a, a technical issue for practitioners and has become a very uh, relevant and, uh, and visible political and uh, social issue, I do think that it's fundamental to take into account all the different perspectives and make sure that we are all on board with the, with the rules that we govern the taxation of cross-border profits for the next uh, 100 years. I think it's very uh, interesting, Mr. Russo, you said that it's no longer a technical issue, it's also a political issue. So true. And therefore, uh, my next logical question is, are all the developing countries on board, especially especially the BRICS countries? I'll quote to Mr. Philip Baker, one of the renowned tax uh, experts from UK, and he's quite skeptical. He says the BEPS report published has virtually no concrete and detailed proposals. He says the developing countries may participate via the United Nations, which will have an input into the project. It will be interesting to see whether the BRICS countries want to participate on that basis. And he then asks a final question, is this the right way to go about building a new consensus? So you have a, a, a renowned tax expert like Mr. Philip Baker from UK saying he's not quite sure whether you have the BRICS countries on board. Do you have the BRICS countries on board? India, China, are all of them on board? I, I think that, uh, that you only need to read the communique from the Moscow meeting of the G20 to, to answer your question. That communique has been signed by the finance ministers of all G20 countries, and uh, the G20 does include all the what you have called the, uh, the BRICS countries: Brazil, Russia, uh, India, uh, Indonesia, China, and, and South Africa, and they've all signed that that communique. Uh, the the idea which has been uh, which has been put forward and uh, which we are working at the moment is to engage uh, G20 countries which are not members of the OECD and there are eight of them uh, to uh, join the BEPS project as associates on an equal footing, which means with equal rights and, and equal uh, obligations. Uh, this is another uh, 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 turning point in the history of international taxation, where effectively these countries uh, will be coming to the table, will make their own proposal, and will participate to the, to the consensus. Uh, I do have, obviously, a lot of respect for, for Professor Becker. He is one of the uh, 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 people that initiated me to, to international taxation. And I do think that this is a typical case of, uh, of, uh, of whether the glass is half full or, or half empty. And time will tell whether it is half full or half empty. Probably it's, 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 it's both of them. But I do think that now we have the political support and attention in order uh, to provide meaningful answers to the questions that are being asked. Uh, let's get to some specific areas. I think, you know, uh, uh, one of the uh, areas is digital uh, economy taxation. <coughs> it's been in such big focus because of Apple, because of uh, Google, because of Amazon. Uh, you know, uh, you had the UK Parliamentary Committee which, which grilled uh, Google and a few other companies. So, <coughs> uh, the issue of digital economy taxation ha has been at the centerpiece uh, of this entire uh, BEPS 15 point action plan. Can, can you just, you know, uh, focus a bit more on that? Can you tell us more about the digital economy taxation? How do you plan, how do you plan uh, to apportion the income of, of a, say, a, a company like Google, which, which exists on almost, in almost every country on the earth? How are you going to ensure that all, the, all say, 150 countries get a fair share of their taxes from Google? Is, is it possible, Mr. Russo? I think it is, and we should make an effort to, to do that. Now, if you look at, at, the, at the action plan on BEPS, there are 15 actions, and uh, one action, actually the first one, is uh, specifically on the digital economy. Now, there will, be, there will be a number of other actions that will certainly also have impact on the planning that has been put in place by companies which are uh, often associated by the wider public with, uh, with the digital economy. 
Mm. And uh, if you think, for example, at the actions that would effectively prevent treaty abuse, if you think about the actions on, on transfer pricing aimed at aligning uh, substance with, uh, uh, with taxation, if you look at the actions on uh, hybrid mismatch arrangements, all these actions will indeed have an impact on the planning of um, uh, companies which are uh, associated to the digital economy. At the same time, the digital economy raises also wider and, and broader issues. And, and, and these issues relate to uh, the, the, effectively the, the difficulty in understanding where value is created in, in these business models. Uh, it relates also to the fact that many of these companies are, are new and therefore have been able to, uh, uh, if you want, benefit from the know-how on, uh, on how to uh, plan uh, tax affairs. Uh, it relates to uh, the need to find a balance between direct and indirect taxation uh, when, when considering the taxation of the, of the digital economy. And all these issues will basically require careful consideration of these business models. And when I talk about business models, I'm not only talking about business models of the companies that exist today, but we will also be looking at how will the world look like in 10 years? What will be the effect of 3D printing on uh, tax rules. <coughs> what, uh, what about uh, uh, electronic uh, currency that is, is now you know, available on the internet and, and since very recently can be cashed out? All these issues uh, go uh, uh, really at the heart of, of the changes that, uh, that, uh, that all our uh, economies have been witnessing in the last uh, 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 couple of decades and we will probably be witnessing in the near, in the near <coughs> future. We do need to understand them in order to be able to design rules that, again, respect the basic principles of taxation and align substance with, uh, with taxation. It's not that it is us, let me, let me be clear. We have set up a task force of uh, uh, government experts that basically will look at all of these issues and uh, will uh, uh, issue a report on what the uh, key uh, issues in this area are and uh, how to address them. Yeah, can you hear us, Mr. Russo? Yes, I can. Yeah, I think uh, my next question is uh, very interesting. There are two concepts which this action plan talks about. One is artificial avoidance of permanent establishment and number two, uh, transparency on certain tax planning and transactions. And uh, you know, one thing that uh, the a common thread that's run through a lot of the OECD press releases over the last few months is automatic exchange of, uh, of info. So you really are betting uh, on the fact uh, or, or, or you're hoping that a lot of the tax administrations, IRS, voluntarily exchange information with other countries and, and that will lead to a coordinated effort to tackle tax avoidance. Isn't that true, Mr. Russo? Uh, indeed. I, I would say that the, the two subjects are uh, related but distinct. Uh, I, I think most of the efforts that have been done in the recent past in relation to uh, automatic exchange of information are more targeted to what uh, 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 we understand as, as tax evasion and very often done by uh, wealthy uh, individuals. Now, at the same time, uh, 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 it is true that the increased cooperation that we are actually already seeing uh, today among governments will also help address back issues. We have uh, 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 set up several years ago a group of, of experts on, on um, aggressive tax planning. Where basically, uh, generally, uh, tax administrators responsible for, for large businesses or for, for aggressive tax planning specifically do exchange uh, uh, information uh, often on an anonymous basis in order just to transfer the know-how. Uh, we have seen, uh, you know, a number of similar schemes popping up in different countries, and thanks to these efforts, these different countries being able to counteract these schemes in a timely manner. So certainly, the increased uh, uh, cooperation among tax administrations and the increased uh, transparency uh, that uh, that uh, that relates to this increased cooperation will help in addressing BEPS issues. Though the primary focus of BEPS is is a policy focus. If the rules produce results with which governments are not happy, governments have to change the rules. Uh, Mr. Russo, I think on transfer pricing, I, I want to concentrate a bit. Uh, it, it says that transparency relates to transfer pricing and value chain analysis and then goes on to say, in many countries, 
tax administrations have little capability of developing a big picture view of a taxpayer's global value chain. In addition, divergences between approaches to transfer pricing documentation <coughs> requirements leads to significant administrative costs for businesses. In this respect, it is important that adequate information uh, about the relevant functions performed by other members of the m &E group in respect of intra-group services and other transactions made available to tax administration and in the action it says the rules to be developed will include a requirement that MNEs provide all relevant governments with needed information on their global allocation of income, economic activity and taxes paid among countries according to a common template. <coughs> we had uh, one of the senior tax experts in India, Mr. T. P. Oswal, who's also on the was also on the UN Committee for Transfer Pricing, and uh, he, he was very skeptical whether a common template uh, can be developed, and if at all, will it be accepted by the countries? It's very ambitious to develop a common template of transfer pricing documentation. Uh, you think that is practical? Again, okay, it seems that all my friends and the people I respect the most in the <laughs> international tax world that are, are skeptical. Uh, 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 yes, it is, it is challenging. Uh, it will require major efforts, but we have probably once in a lifetime opportunity to do that. Uh, if you look at, uh, at what was included in uh, this time in the G8 communique uh, under the UK presidency, uh, and you look at what is included in, uh, in the action plan in relation to what uh, uh, many people refer to as uh, country by country reporting. Yeah. This is, this is a major development and uh, obviously we have heard NGOs not happy with the fact that this will not be disclosed in the, in the public domain. If you look at the action plan, there is the clear intention to make this information available to governments in order for them to use this information for the risk analysis. Now, it is difficult to come up with a common template, yes it is, but uh, probably the same thing would have been said that it, it has actually been said to me. Uh, six months ago about drafting an action plan on which uh, 40 plus countries will agree. And we got there. And we got there because we have the political momentum in order to do that. So basically to summarize, I think uh, it is indeed extremely difficult, but it is possible. And we will do it. Uh, many are saying that uh, transfer pricing, in transfer pricing, intangibles, they are saying 2013 is the year of uh, uh, intangibles. How difficult it is to deal with a, a, a complex and complicated subject like, like intangibles. You know, the, the very word says there is nothing, it's not, it's not tangible, it's not something that can be seen. So when you are dealing with concepts like brand and goodwill, it's not, it's not easy, Mr. Russo, to, 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 to develop some sort of a, a common template again. Absolutely. It is, not, it is not easy. It is probably one of the most difficult topics uh, to be addressed uh, uh, in the context of the, of the action plan on BEPS. As you certainly know, uh, there has already been quite some work done at the level of the OECD on the best aspects of intangibles. We published a discussion in the past. We held a public consultation. Work has continued. And in the near future, we will, re we will issue a revised uh, a discussion draft. Uh, as, as a friend of mine put it to me, there are certain things that if you cannot do in one year, you cannot do them in 100 years. So clearly the issues are technically difficult, but possibly the most difficult uh, aspect of all the work we do is to achieving consensus among 40 plus countries on what is the best way to address a given problem. Yeah. And in that respect, I do hope that the political support that we have had from the political masters at the level of the G20 will help. I think uh, one question uh, that many, uh, many, uh, many have expressed optimism, many tax experts, uh, that the BEPS action plan should also lead to lesser litigation. You are seeing in country like India, every day we, we hear about a new MNC, uh, you know, approaching the courts <coughs> and you, you had many billion dollar tax disputes, Vodafone, Shell, I can, I can Nokia, I can go naming them. So, uh, I think the, the larger hope of, uh, or the underlying hope of, for all the MNCs uh, in this BEPS is whether this is going to provide some solution to the vexed tax litigations that they are facing in many countries, Mr. Russo. I do think so, and I sincerely hope so. I think 
the, the environment in the international tax world has become quite unstable. And uh, uh, there have been in, uh, in, in several quarters attempts uh, to uh, reinterpret the existing rules in a way that uh, from the perspective of either the tax administration or the taxpayer, it would make more sense than what it actually did under a different interpretation. Now, this creates uncertainty. This uh, creates uh, a number of, of litigation procedures that are often very long. And, uh, and this uncertainty and this lack of predictability is certainly harmful, both for tax administrations and uh, for, for taxpayers. So, I do hope that the work on BEPS will, uh, will basically restore the certainty and predictability that is needed for everyone to do his or her own job properly. Uh, my last two questions, Mr. Russo. <coughs> uh, number one, uh, why now? I mean, that's the question. You have a, a senior judge, a tax judge uh, in India, very well known and renowned in international tax circles, who, who said that the, that the OECD has woken up very late. Uh, and they've woken up because today the developed countries have got hit. When developing countries were, were crying foul, at that time no one paid attention. But because today developed countries have got hit, and uh, that is the reason why uh, the OECD has woken up. Would you uh, accept uh, or concede that the OECD has woken up a little late in this case? Uh, uh, I have two young kids and I sleep very rarely in the night, so I'm more awake than, than, than sleeping. I don't think so. I think the OECD has done work in this area for several years already. What was different was the political profile of the work. We launched the work on aggressive tax planning more than seven years ago, and it has already started to produce a concrete results in the way tax administrations do their work, and I can give you a number of examples in, in that respect. At the same time, as I was saying before, now there is the strong political support that uh, basically has brought the uh, 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 spotlight on this issue. And this will certainly help in achieving that consensus that we are looking for in, uh, in that area. So certainly, you know, things could have been done better in the past. Everything can be improved. But uh, I don't think that you can, uh, that you can say that the OECD was the reason before. Uh, my last question, uh, I, I'll quote one of the big critics of this report, uh, Mr. Richard Murphy. Uh, he says, in, in my opinion, little is being done to really achieve this goal in the BEPS program. Unitary taxation, which would emphatically help the countries by ensuring profits are reapportioned to them, has been rejected. So he's quite upset that you've rejected unitary taxation. And uh, he also makes a, a, another point, <coughs> no significant bias to source-based taxation has been introduced into the tax system to help them and the bias inherent in OECD double tax treaties towards developed countries therefore remains. And the last point he makes is the hopes for country by country reporting arising from BEPS looks like they may be limited as a result of lobbying by multinational companies and the USA, both of whom carry a lot of power. Well, Are these concerns really well founded? I think here we clearly have a diverging view uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Mr. Murphy. Uh, here we are looking for solutions that work and possibly in the shortest time possible. Now, there is no government or those that have signed up for the action plan to support unitary taxation. If we had the money and resources available, I think we would be more than happy to spend the next five years in analyzing the issues that that you know, of a completely new system like a uh, uh, unity in the in the in the public domain. But there is no interest in doing so. At the same time, you have a system which is well tried and tested over years and which actually works quite well in a number of areas. There are, however, areas where the system doesn't work well. And there is a recognition of that in both the report of February and in the BEPS uh, action plan. Now, what we will see is whether these uh, uh, areas can be addressed through transfer pricing rules, and if it's not possible, through special rules, which may go beyond uh, the arm's length principle. But this is a completely different route from saying, okay, we take what we have today and all the good things that we have in the system today, we throw them to the garbage bin and we come up with a completely different system. We don't know 
what the consequences of this will be. There have already been study, uh, studies in, in the recent past arguing that actually it will not have an, a, a strong impact on the behavior of, of multinationals and will still present opportunities for uh, 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 aggressive tax planning or arbitrage or whatever you want, uh, you want to call it. So, uh, being in front of a choice, so looking for something which is idealistic and may take 20 years and looking for something that may take less and may actually work, we went for the second one. Uh, my absolute final question, one line answer. Uh, do you think the 18 to 24 month timeline that you set for yourself, is it, is it practical? Uh, is it achievable, should I ask? the 18 to 24 month timeline to implement this? Absolutely, yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Russo, for, for, your, for your time. And uh, it, nice. it's a pleasure uh, to talk to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Mr. Good Russo, luck. for joining us from Paris. We don't do the good work that you do with, uh, with Tax Sutra. I do follow your website uh, uh, on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you so much. Thank you.